At the start of World War II, engineers were already not satisfied with the max power output you could get by using a piston engine. With the existing design, the only way to get a significantly more powerful engine was to make it significantly bigger, which made the task of designing an aircraft around it hellishly difficult. That's why scientists and engineers all over the world started developing new types of engines. And one of the most promising of them at the time was the liquid rocket engine. The USSR had their first experimental rocket-powered aircraft in the early 1940s, when a young engineer called Alexander Berezniak was given an experimental rocket engine designed by Leonid Dushkin, which was very powerful but also was a glutton for fuel, the Soviets realized that they were this close to getting an ultra-fast interceptor. So the work on the new Berezniak Isayev aircraft, or simply BI-1, was a go. The idea was that it would be used to protect big cities from enemy bombers. At first, everything went well. The BI-1 had its maiden flight in 1942, with six successful flight tests within a year. The interceptor was almost ready for mass production. But then, in 1943, a tragedy struck. The military wanted to see how fast it could possibly go. And the plane, piloted by Grigory Bakshivandri and flying at approximately 900 kilometers per hour, entered a 45-degree dive and crashed into the ground, killing the pilot. The accident put a halt to flight tests. And while Soviet engineers sought to find the cause of it, a new, more viable type of engine emerged the turbojet. And in the end, that was what the military decided to go with. German scientists were also enthralled with liquid propulsion, with their first serious experiments in this field dating as far back as the mid-1930s. But their biggest breakthrough came in the form of the Messerschmitt ME-163 Comet, a rocket-powered interceptor that was accepted into service in the summer of 1944. The manufacturer had a good reputation for making aircraft that performed really well in combat. So the military decided to approve the production of the Comet, and engineers delivered. The ME-163 became the first rocket plane ever to be mass-produced, and it was also the only rocket-powered fighter aircraft ever to have been used in combat. There are two variants of the Comet in War Thunder. The B-0 pre-production version armed with two 20mm MG-151 cannons and the ME-163B production model armed with two 30mm MK-108 cannons. The former can be equipped with two additional cannons and the latter has superior flight characteristics. During the fall of 1943, a Japanese military attaché saw the comet in action during a visit to the Luftwaffe squadron charged with testing of the new interceptor. The attaché was so impressed with what he'd seen that he suggested that Japan should acquire the rights to license produce the aircraft and its rocket engine at home. At first, the Japanese military were hesitant doubting that the Empire of Japan had manufacturing capacity to provide enough fuel, but with the very real threat of the B-29 Superfortress looming over the islands, the Japanese didn't have much of a choice. They desperately needed a high-speed interceptor with a great climb rate, so they bought the license. It wasn't cheap. Imperial Japan purchased a licensing contract from Messerschmitt for 20 million Reichsmarks. The Japanese were to receive complete blueprints of the plane and the engine, and also the help of German specialists, a complete comet, and a complete engine with sub-assemblies and components. But a submarine with this precious cargo was sunk on its way to Japan. The work on the Japanese version started only in 1944 at Mitsubishi, as the plane was built as a joint project for both the Navy and the Army Air Services, 
It was designated J-8M for the Navy and Key 200 for the Army. The first prototypes were ready by December of 1944, but the Japanese interceptor only took to the skies in 1945. To test the performance of a fully operational aircraft, complete with engine and weapons, the Japanese also constructed a prototype that used water ballast. When the interceptor finally took to the air for its first powered flight, though, it didn't last long. At an altitude of only a few hundred meters, the engine stopped and the plane crashed into the ground. In the end, the Empire of Japan simply didn't have enough time to finish it. Not a single production J-8M or Ki-200 was ready by the end of the war. Ultimately, history proved that rocket-powered interceptors were not the way to go. In reality, even the fact that they could achieve incredible speed couldn't justify their very limited operation time capability. And every time they took to the skies was a big gamble for brave people that piloted them. However, the experience accumulated while developing rocket planes was simply invaluable. There's no other way to describe it. What is your opinion on rocket-powered interceptors of World War II? Come on, if any of you have any at all, please tell us in the comments below. We'd love to hear them.